Humans are explorers. Uh, we'd like to see places like this, like this, but we also don't want this while doing that, right? And so the major challenge uh, that faces humanity today uh, is to figure out a way to have sustainable transportation, and, and that is personal transportation and also aviation. So I will tell you a little bit about the missing piece for sustainable transportation and sustainable aviation. And it turns out that it's actually the batteries uh, that are the key missing piece uh, in all of this. One route to sustainable transportation is to couple a renewable power source uh, to an electric vehicle. And you have uh, potentially a zero emission vehicle. Now, the problem with electric vehicles that we have today uh, is that they don't go very far and they don't last as long as we would like them to. And so uh, the key aspect that governs the development of electric vehicles uh, is to make sure that electric vehicles last longer uh, on a single charge and also uh, the batteries last for a sufficiently long period of time. Now, in the quest for what's called the super battery, uh, there are many, many options. Uh, lithium ion batteries have emerged uh, as the ubiquitous choice for electric vehicles. But the word lithium ion batteries uh, takes many different flavors. Uh, and I'll sort of walk you through some of the options available for next generation electric vehicles. So what I show here uh, is a plot of the energy density, that is the amount of energy stored in unit weight of the battery uh, over the last 150 years. Left, you see lead acid battery, the workhorse battery uh, for the last 100 years or so. Uh, and then we have nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride. Uh, and then we have lithium ion, which was introduced in 1990 uh, and since then has revolutionized uh, consumer electronics uh, and now is on its way to revolutionize electric vehicles. But there's a problem. Uh, there is a general consensus that we've reached the limit uh, of where lithium ion batteries can take us. And, and what I show here uh, is a, a typical range of an electric vehicle when you have a reasonably sized battery pack. Uh, it turns out that with lithium ion batteries, you can go about 200 kilometers, maybe about 100, 150 miles. Where we would like to be is about 500 miles, potentially 400 miles. And so we would like to look beyond lithium ion. And the options beyond lithium ion, uh, there are zinc air batteries, there's lithium sulfur, uh, which is a really exciting uh, battery chemistry, and lithium air, uh, which is the holy grail uh, in battery chemistries. Now, a common aspect to both lithium sulfur and lithium air is the need to change the anode that is used today, which is graphite, and move towards a lithium metal anode. Lithium metal has been studied for over 40 years. This was one of the first potential anode materials investigated in the 1970s. But there is a general consensus emerging that with the new tools that we have, both in characterization, new material discovery, that there is a chance that we can solve the lithium metal problem. The major challenge with lithium metal uh, is that when you discharge and charge the battery, there are dendritic structures that evolve, and these structures grow in time. And eventually, the anode, the dendritic structures grow from the anode to the cathode. And this causes an internal shot. There is a tremendous surge of current. And then this causes liquid electrolytes to explode. Right? And we've seen many, many instances of this. This has played out in the fires in hoverboards. Uh, in uh, e-cigarettes, uh, and most recently uh, in issues related to uh, uh, smartphone fires. How do you solve this problem uh, of dendritic growth? And this problem actually is more pronounced when you try and use lithium metal. Now, these dendritic structures grow, and they are typically very hard to suppress in liquid-based electrolytes that are used today in lithium-ion batteries. One radical approach to solve this is to change the electrolyte from the liquid electrolyte that we use today to a potential all solid state. So you use a solid electrolyte. Or you could use a hybrid electrolyte, which consists of a solid electrolyte that is in contact with lithium metal. And then a liquid electrolyte 
that then maintains all the good aspects that we have in lithium ion batteries today. The idea of using a solid electrolyte is the following. What you have is you have a dendritic structure that is growing. Now, naively, if I put something that is hard enough against the dendritic structure that's growing, then uh, if the material is hard enough, then it can basically suppress the growth of dendrites. Now, the challenge is that we must find a material that can suppress dendrites, that is, be mechanically strong, but at the same time, be sufficiently ion conducting so that we don't lose power performance out of our lithium ion batteries. And at the same time, it needs to be easily manufacturable so that it can be integrated into the manufacturing facilities that we have in lithium ion batteries today. And so these, this main uh, issue has sort of hindered the growth of the field of solid electrolytes, but with new new ways in which we can manufacture solid electrolytes, it is possible uh, for us to imagine a way in which we can solve the lithium dendrite problem. Armed with the lithium metal anode, along with conventional cathode materials that we use today, we can reach driving ranges of about 300 to 400 miles, and this seems to be the most likely near-term solution for electric vehicles. The route to sustainable transportation is somewhat clear, However, the route to sustainable aviation is less clear. We have jet fuel that is an exceptionally energy dense fuel that powers all of aviation today. Now, if you would like to electrify aircrafts, there's a major challenge. Jet fuels have an energy density of about 11,000 watt hours per kilogram. The best batteries today are somewhere in the range of 200 to 300. So we have a formidable task uh, to electrify aircrafts. But we are saved by a few different aspects. Fully electrifying aircrafts allows us to exploit some other new architectures that are possible with flights that allows us to bring down the drag, overall drag of these aircrafts. And potentially, if the energy density is sufficiently high, uh, we could access electrifying aircrafts. What I show here is a plot of the energy density. The batteries that power electric vehicles today are in the range of 200 to 300 watt hours per kilogram. The kind of batteries that we would need to power all kinds of aircrafts are of the order of 750 and above. We have no such battery chemistry today that can provide energy densities of this scale. But there is a window where we can reach energy densities in the range of 400 to 500, and this can potentially electrify flights that are of medium range, say 200 to 400 miles, which actually uh, occupies about 90% of the total flights that are flown uh, in the United States. And for this, we need battery chemistries that are greater than 400 watt hours per kilogram. And that leaves us with very, very few options. Aircrafts have some unique features that make certain battery chemistries more attractive. Aircrafts have onboard oxygen systems. Now you couple the oxygen cathode with the lithium metal anode we talked about earlier, and you have one of the most energy dense chemistries that we have today. Now that makes lithium oxygen batteries a unique fit for electric aircraft applications. The main challenge to enable lithium oxygen batteries are the electrolytes. The electrolytes in lithium oxygen batteries decompose, and this severely limits the amount of energy we can get and the number of cycles these batteries last. And there's also a second piece to this, which is closely tied to safety. The state-of-the-art electrolytes that are used today are flammable, and so this is totally unacceptable for electric aircraft applications. So electrolytes are the key limiting piece for lithium ion batteries to achieve practically high energy densities, sufficient rechargeability so that you have a good cycle life out of these batteries, and also that these batteries are safe. Now, how do you go about designing an electrolyte? And it turns out that going about discovering electrolytes has been a rather Edisonian process. Uh, we've been looking, searching, mixing, with really no rational way to design new electrolytes. And so we decided to take a different approach to solving this problem. What we wanted to do was to try and sort of develop the Google Maps for electrolytes, right? What we wanted to do was to figure out 
how we can navigate to the destination, which is the stable electrolyte that can power lithium air batteries. The approach we've taken is to use data, to use big data, and use that to drive electrolyte discovery. And so this involves three key aspects. First is datafication, which is essentially compiling data, simulating new data, using experimental data as input to guide our discovery process. And when you have large amounts of data, trends emerge. You can make discoveries automatically from the data. Now, in order to do that, you need very, very powerful discovery tools. These discovery tools could be visual discovery tools. These could be discovery tools that involve searching over the parameter space, finding anomalies, finding similar candidates. And once you have the data and once you have the discovery tools, all you need is the fundamental science that allows all of this to come together to discover new electrolyte candidates. And so with this in mind, we've launched this tool called SEED, which stands for System for Electrolyte Exploration and Discovery. The SEED tool has over 50 million electrolyte attributes. And with this, uh, we've, we've found numerous candidates that are exciting for various kinds of battery applications, including lithium air batteries. And we hope that through this data-driven approach, we will find a, a stable electrolyte that can make lithium air batteries achieve the energy densities that we want, have the rechargeability that we desire, and be as safe as we would like them to be. And with those lithium, lithium air batteries, we could hopefully power electric aircrafts like this to fly 200 to 400 miles. That's the first frontier. And then hopefully, through careful engineering, it is possible to access energy densities. And that, coupled uh, with uh, collaboration uh, with aircraft redesign, it is possible to electrify all of aviation and make aviation also totally sustainable.